with like all the production. Uh huh. Oh no, I just started recording. And so, like, if I'm going to Virginia Beach, and because I know a specific part of Virginia Beach is going to get a little wonky right yeah. before the tunnel, yeah, because they're doing the construction and um, you know, widening and everything. Um, the part of 64 that they did widen is it's a breeze now. It's a certain part of 64 that's, that becomes five lanes before you get to um, a little bit ways past Hampton because right. you know they have HOV lanes, but it's a part of 64, um, not too far out of Richmond, um, that really opens up and gets you to that tunnel a lot faster. And so now that they're doing the construction now in that way to widen the tunnel, I think they're also widening the lanes towards the tunnel. So hopefully once they get everything complete it'll be a breeze to hit 64 because it's like i said that certain part that they widen up and it turns to four lanes then five lanes and then back to four is like, yeah i love that part of 64 now yeah and i'm just like man all this it seems like it's always so much construction going up as you as you go up as you go north it's so much construction all the time it's been that way since i've been driving up that way since i was eight, 17 Dude, before we were born and i'm like are y'all ever gonna finish they always got new plans to widen to to get more traffic to come through and it's just always a headache but it's the rigors and the good i i like traveling by car so for me it's just like it's just one of those things where it's like you got to factor that into the road trip yeah you did you definitely do and i i i factored in to a degree but not to the degree in which we had been you know, obstructed just based off the highway being shut down. So we end up going on 95, had to get off 95, get on 301, get on 10, get on, get on route one. I'm like, all right. So we had to go around and around to go to our destination because the highway was shut down in that part. Right. But it was it was all in all a good trip though. It was just it was just that part. I'm like, man, this is crazy. How did he do it? How did he do in his races? Oh, he came in. Um, he finished second overall, um, with his time at at nationals. He came in second with over with his overall time in his heap. I was like, I can't ask for nothing better. I I was like, all all I ask you do do your best. If you give it your all, dude, I'm proud of you. No matter right. what, give it your right. all and leave it on the field. That way, you don't have any regret. Because I don't want you to feel like, man, I should have did this. Nope, just right. leave it out there. Right. And he did good. I was so happy. He, of course, he wanted all the merch and whatnot. I'm like, <laughs> fine. I'm like, man, I just paid forty five dollars for a t shirt. What? That's all right. Gotta get it. I was at Penn I was like, State. I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. <laughs> but it was a good time. It was a good time. The kids had a good time. You saw the you saw the pictures. They was up until they weren't, and then they weren't. Right. Like, all right. right, it's just hot out here. Can we leave yet? Like, no, we ain't run yet. I was like, but I'm tired though. I know we all tired and selling these hard bleachers and concrete. It don't feel good, right. but hey, we ain't here for that. Right. And so they they got on board. Then we get then I gave them some wagon rides. It was fine after that. And so I just ran around the park a lot. <laughs> so it was fine after that. It was a good time. But oh we ah man, I'm so glad to be back here with you, cousin. Cause I I, th I, I miss you. I really do miss you when I don't you know, interact with you as often as I would like to. I really do. I'm like, man, I was like, that's my cousin. <laughs> and I felt I felt so bad that we couldn't do this last time. I'm like, oh, uh, I just could not get moving. I was like, I got it. I was like, man, that's that's why I said well, I'm so sorry, because I'm like, <laughs> I, I just could not get moving. I didn't start actually getting up until like three that afternoon. I was just drag and everything felt so slow i'm like i can't yeah I can't sometimes yeah sometimes your body's like you have to like this this is my way of telling you like today is a no day like today yeah. is the day we're gonna, we're gonna do a lot of resting and we're gonna get us back together right i'm like this your this your day to get your mental focus back let your body rest up because mm, it just was not happening i'm like man i feel so bad i'm like i miss my cousin i want to do this but I'm like I just can't move. Right. I feel you. I feel you. It's but sometimes you just burn out. And, and that's why I said, man, I got And I you said, can't do anything. You, It's no way to go around burnout. You have to go through it. And the only way to go through it is to get some rest. 
And because if not, you you gonna make it worse. It's gonna get ten times worse. Oh man. And I just felt so bad. Like I hate waste. I hate when my time's wasting. I hate wasting other people's time. Like I know I told you, like, I'm so sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, but we here now, and we here to get it cracking. We here. So welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of our podcast, Shut Up and Be Quiet. Me and my cousin, we talking over here. Um, you can like, share, and subscribe. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, you name it, we there. Just look at it, just, just search for us, we there. Oh, man, we got a few topics we going to discuss on this glorious, glorious Juneteenth as we're shooting this. Don't forget, celebrate Juneteenth. Um, Yeah, if you don't know, if you don't know fully about it, because I didn't learn about it until about five years ago, honestly. Just being, just being 100, just keeping it 100. I didn't learn about it, the, the full meaning of it until about five years ago. And I've been trying to, you know, get the kids into doing stuff. And my daughter asked me about, hey, we're going to do anything for Juneteenth today. We absolutely are. So we're going to ride out a little later, go to a little festival that they're having um, somewhere around, somewhere around here. I, I got the address um, in my phone. But, yeah, so make sure if you don't know, no, celebrate it and, 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 and take part of it. All right, cousin. So today on the docket, I know we had, um, change some stuff up because we talked about it already. But um, one thing I want um want to get with you with is to see what you think. Oh yeah, what is a tropical island that you would want to visit? Just 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 one in particular, one island you would want to visit where you can just relax, have a good time. Just one. Uh, because I've never been, I'm going to say one, uh, which is the obvious that everybody goes to is Jamaica, but Bali. Um, I have a friend that is, the, uh, she's a yoga instructor and um, her and her uh, boyfriend go to Bali a lot to do um, yoga retreats and teach yoga camps and things of that nature. And it always looks so like, it just looks peaceful wherever they are and um the things that they do and that, that that they do over there they go to this uh particular spot i don't even know if it's a resort or whatever it is but they also have the option like of like walking the beach and um hiking through i guess like the the, the jungle or whatever they call it over there and it <laughs> just looks so far away from a city far away from what uh i'm used to which is city life so definitely it would be for me Bali and then Jamaica just because everybody has been to Jamaica except for me. No, no, no don't get me wrong. I I yeah, I I've gone to parts of Jamaica. Uh, yeah, I've been to a couple of different parts of Jamaica. But yeah, Jamaica's gorgeous. Um Bali is dope though. Though I I've only seen I've only seen Bali in pictures. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm like mm -hmm. I have to go there because it just looks beautiful. And I have a friend, she does a lot of travel too. Um, but yeah, she's I seen some of her pictures from Bali. I was like, good lord, this place looks like it, it, it almost looks magical. I was mm -hmm. like, am I gonna go to a different portal? Somebody be transported to a new world if I go here? Because man, it looks great. <laughs> but yeah, Bali is definitely a, a go-to place. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna go to hit Bali up. Um, one place I always wanted to go to that I've never been. If Fiji Island, I want I want to go I want to go to Fiji. I want to take just me and the wife to Fiji. I don't want to. I, no, this this is a wife. This is an adult only trip. Kids, y'all stand in the states when we do Fiji because no, I I want to I want to do Fiji because that, again another beautiful gorgeous place and just just seeing that I'm like man it looks so pretty here. And I just want to see that visually with my own eyes. Um, I remember the first time I went to Natural Bridge, that's in Virginia. That's mm -hmm. gorgeous. I'm like, wow, this is so pretty. And then seeing the Lou Ray Cavers and everything, like, this stuff is it's beautiful stuff that's local, but at the same time, it's beautiful things that are abroad too. And I just I just like seeing, I, I love good visuals. That's, that's just me. Most of I've gotten to Fiji is the water. 
<laughs> Courtesy of Sam's Club. <laughs> <laughs> my stylist that does my hair, uh, she always drinks Fiji water, and I always give her hell every time I go and if, if she's doing my hair, or whatever. And I say, um, can I get can, can I have some water? And she'll say, yeah. And she'll bring me a bottle of Fiji water. I'm like, oh, so this is what my money's paying for? Like, oh, oh you big time! And she just falls out laughing. <laughs> that's, that's as close as I've gone to Fiji. Hey, that's about as close. That nah, that's not as close I've gotten to. That's as close I've gotten to it. But oh, I'm definitely gonna go there within the next couple years. Oh, we're going. We're gonna hit Fiji up for sure. Oh yeah, just just because I I I'm I'm at a point now to where I I I I don't mind working, but at the same time, I'm going to enjoy life too because things are too beautiful. And life is too precious to sit around and not do it. So we're we're gonna time, time's ticking. Yeah, that's one thing you can't get back. And that's what I always try to tell people. That's one of my biggest issues, like with people when it comes to like time and, and lateness and things of that nature. It's like I can't get that time back. So what do you what, what are we doing? Right. And again, what are we doing? I felt so bad about that. Damn. Like, oh man, I, I, I'm a I'm a stickler for time. I'm a stickler for 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 like open communication because. I think people sometimes get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, myself included. So I'm not exempt from that. But I think sometimes we as humans, we get so caught up in life that we just have this assumption that we're going to have time. And that is the one thing that is a huge question mark. Money is not a question mark. You can go out here and collect cans to get money. You mm -hmm. can go out here and get a job and McDonald's to make money. You can go out here and get a job and be a CEO and make money. So money is not a question mark. Um, but time is definitely a question mark. You don't know how much of it you have. You don't know how much you have left. And so for me, I'm all about trying to make things work. So, I mean, even for example, something as simple as like, hey, let's go to the beach. I have never in my life faced so many problems and headaches with other adults with the act of doing something and it's not the actual you know it's not the actual beach that's the problem it's the doing something right. it's the uh, what okay let's get together and plan what day we're going what time we're going you know though it's just getting people in that space to do that is like pulling teeth now and I'm like I don't even, I don't have the energy for that. And so that's why like a lot of times you see, if you see me, I'm somewhere solo by myself. I may shoot down to the beach um, and just go enjoy the beach by myself. And then you get the people, especially if you share it on social media, you get the people saying, oh, you didn't invite me. No, you don't want to do the work. You want the benefits, but you don't want to do the work. The effort, right. Right. So what are you, what, are, what would you, what, what are you going to add to the equation of us going to the beach? So you want to go to the beach now that I'm at the beach. Now that I got up and went to the beach, now that I drove to the beach, like I hate dealing with adults who are not about action. Like, what are we doing? Right. You know, so I've I've learned that you got to just sometimes go and experience stuff by yourself or like you have a wife. So sometimes you have to be like, hey, come on. It's just going to be us. You know, we yeah. can't we, we I'm not dragging another couple along. I'm not I don't have time for it. Let's just go and enjoy this experience while we have the time to do it. Exactly. And prime example of that we would we didn't have the kids one weekend and we literally just rode down to Chesapeake to go to a Caribbean festival. I love oh. anything by way of like Chesapeake, um, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, that area, because it's all really tied towards the water. Yeah. I love I love being down there. I, I would literally go to Virginia Beach just to sit on the boardwalk to people watch, to just be, you know, sitting there in front of the water. Um, especially, I love to go sit by the Triton, um, or what they call, I think his name, I keep calling him Triton, but his name is King Neptune, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I like to go sit by that statue. You get so many people from so many different countries and parts of the world, you know, the world or just different states that come and they want yeah. to take a picture. And oftentimes, they can't take a picture as a family because somebody had to take the picture. Right. So when we, I went down um, with the kids I volunteered with uh, last year and um, I sit on a boardwalk and um, the other chaperone has them on the beach. And I know I took at least 100 pictures um, just sitting in that one little spot. 
because people, you know, mom will take the picture of dad and the kids and dad will take the picture of mom and the kids. But they are like trying to improvise. And I'm always like, would you like me to take the picture? And like, oh my God, what you thank you so much. So <laughs> just seeing people happy just to have that little experience was enough for me. Like I didn't have to be doing anything specific at the beach. And right. uh, the beach has a lot of things you can do down there now. It's so different than what it was many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, tons of things you can do down there now. And so that's an added bonus, but I'm talking about literally for free, you can literally, I, for me anyway, I have loved going down there and just sitting on the boardwalk. You see so many interesting people riding on interesting things, you know, interesting types of transportation, uh, dogs, and you just see all kinds of stuff. So for me, I'm a, I'm a big doer. Like, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think another thing, too, I think we get caught up in so much of trying to make a living. We forget to live. You right. know, we just so but, uh, yeah, you need money to do stuff. You absolutely do. How but not you? always. That's why I go back to when I say um it's a, it's the doing for me. Yeah. Because I know factually when you go to Virginia Beach, they have um the parking deck is attached to the Hilton Hotel. Right. So you can park in the deck, walk across the skyline and take the elevator downstairs and you go right across the street and you're at the beach. Um and then it's a little pavilion. Um, and a little amphitheater right beside that that has public bathrooms and, and you know, and I think um, little showers where you rinse your feet off when you, you come off the sand and whatnot. And so, yeah, everybody doesn't have money to go down, you know, get a get a hotel at, at the uh, beach or whatever. But if you want to make a day of it, it's a po it's a po it's possible to make a day. Yeah, of it. But some people people are just lazy. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to facilitate anything. Um, my generation, especially. Once, at, which I find funny <laughs> that they talk so much about the younger generation or the millennials or this is really my generation that really sucks. They don't want to do anything. My generation is a generation that's not cooking Thanksgiving dinner. They're not the ones, you know, they still think our parents are supposed to be cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so I, I find it funny when my generation spews so much about entitlement. We are the originators <laughs> of entitlement because there's no reason why holidays and barbecues we're not the ones facilitating this we're still looking at our parents and grandparents to be doing that but we none of us make the effort to do it so again that's one of the reasons why i'm always somewhere by myself making it happen because if i wait on other people guess what it ain't gonna, it's happen. Never gonna happen and i've seen generations of people uh our parents our grandparents and even our great-grandparents i was blessed enough to know my great-grandparent um that made things happen so the excuse of of whatever excuses that I get is not plausible to me because I know better. Well, I feel you 100% on that. I feel you, cousin. All right, next up. Ooh, if you had a superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? Hmm. I'm going to think on that one. <laughs> Uh, well, why you think on that? I'll go ahead and do mine. For me, a uh, superpower, if I could, one that I automatically ruled out is being able to read minds. I never want to do that because <laughs> I don't want to know what's on you. I don't want to know that because people think of some wild stuff. I know what goes on in my head. And it's like, you you thought of that? I don't I don't want to know what's going on in somebody else's head. I don't I don't need to do that. That'll drive right. me insane. If I had a superpower, it would be teleportation. That way I could think I can go somewhere. I'm there. That's okay, good. I, I want to go to Fiji. AK, hey, hold on to me. We in Fiji. Where I close at? Well, we'll figure that out while we're here. Let's 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 go. Let's have a good time. Because it'll cut down on so much travel time and planning stuff out. No, I I can go there <laughs> instantly. I ain't got I'm there. I'm already there. I ain't got to worry about the logistics. I ain't got to worry about what we're going to eat. No, we eat when we get there. Guess what? We here now. What do you want to eat? Right. Right. So, oh, man, just to be able to do that. And, oh, yeah. And because I wouldn't want flight because I wouldn't want to be able to fly just because of simple fact. Radar and stuff. I don't want to get shot down. Stuff. Too much crazy stuff going on over here. And I ain't trying to deal with that. So, no, if I can just be somewhere where I think about it and I focus and I'm there, I'll I'll definitely do that. That 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 would be a superpower I would take just to be able to 
instantly go where I want to go or take somebody I want to take with me in that in that instant I, we can go and we're there so that that's it for me oh, for me are we talking like superhero yeah uh or or just something you you would want but something we haven't seen like on a on a marvel movie or something you know what yes Something that you will want that that's not on a Marvel movie. It's something that's specific to you, if actually the teleportation. That's to serve my selfish purposes of going to where I want. <laughs> but seriously, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do much good with it. I will do some. I'm gonna help some people out. I'm not gonna help a whole lot of people. I'm not gonna. I'm just being honest. Listen, I'm on. I'm on. I'm just being honest. I am going to use this power very selfishly majority of the time. Right. Just being real. I think for me, if I was able to have a superpower, a real life superpower, um, and this is probably going to sound so crazy, but I would like the ability to heal people. And I know that would come with a huge responsibility. See, because that's such a noble thing. I don't um, know what about. But, I want well, my biggest thing, when people say, when people say, ask the question, what is the one thing that you hate in life? Mm -hmm. right so I hear a lot of people say different things right my thing in life that I, I hate and I don't do not like and I wish I could eradicate is human suffering and that has been my thing since I was a little little child I do not like to see people animals suffer at mm -hmm. all and so because that's my thing that is so near and dear to my heart the first thing that came to my mind when you said superpowers, I'm like, if I could think of my own, but nobody does this in the Marvel movies. Like <laughs> Wolverine can like regenerate and heal himself like in, you know, 24 hours. Right. But I would like to literally be able to heal people just so that they could get, you know, a, a bigger fruition out of life. And I know that it sound, probably sounds so corny and sappy, but again, I hate human suffering. And if I was able to have a superpower that I could actually use and do some good with, it would definitely be to heal people. Because imagine somebody sitting there with like this ugly heart. Right. And I could just walk past and just like tap them and boom, they heal. You know, they got a beautiful, loving, caring, generous, beautiful heart, you know, and just keep it moving. Right. Yeah, I can see me just like in every state running around just touching people. They probably lock me up. This lady who's out here touching people. <laughs> She's in a hospital touching people. We don't have any more patients. We're not making any more money because this lady is out here touching people. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid to talk about God. I'm not afraid to love God out loud. And yeah, I think absolutely. that it makes me think of the story about the lady, you know, if I could just touch him, him and his garment. Right. You know, Jesus literally could just walk around touching and healing people. And I think that is what one of the things that I think is so dope about Jesus. Like he could just walk around healing people and he did, you know. So if I could really like if I could do that, I know it would take the burden off of like um a lot of people don't realize like childhood cancer is a really big thing. Yeah. Um childhood cancer doesn't have a lot of research. So a lot of children unfortunately pass away as a result of having um cancer i think neuroblastoma or something to that um the degree there uh, are a lot of aggressive childhood cancers yeah. and they don't have a lot of research and um in in these uh spaces for these particular cancers and they don't have a lot of funding a lot of the funding goes to adult cancers and right. so um you you know my heart for children oh, all yeah. children not not just the children i know I love all children and I feel like all children deserve a chance and a shot. And I feel like God put me here for before them for a reason to be a protector of them and to look at the children, not just the children I know, but all children. And so because I have seen um, a couple of just people I, I found on social media and I followed um, who children had really aggressive cancer um, just to see the burden on the family. Um, on a little person that doesn't know what's happening to them truly, yeah. why it's happening. And they look at their parents and want to know, like, well, can't you fix this? Because you're my mom, you're my dad. Right. And then they have siblings who don't understand. Um, and so just the devastation that I see um, just from 
when I when I've seen children go through things, um, I, I, I it's another little girl. I follow her and her family. She has um, childhood. I want to say childhood dementia, um, which That's is a it. thing. Yes, which is going to take her life. Um, she wasn't expected to live. Um, I don't think she was expected to live past five, and she's nine now. And um, every day and every year, she um, she's losing certain abilities mm -hmm. um because with dementia it's yeah. a progressive disease that takes you out you know that, that kills you um that you die from and so a lot of times oftentimes people don't realize that children can have heart attacks and strokes um i know one child in particular had a stroke being born um wasn't here yet was being born and had a stroke as he was being born um so children suffer heart attacks and strokes and they may seem very uncommon but it, it it really is a thing so for me just to be able to heal people just because um when I see these babies and they don't um they don't really have an understanding because they're they're kids and they're not supposed yeah, to have no. an adult understanding. Um I seen one lady recently she lives in maybe Turkey or something um somewhere overseas and um her son was ringing the cancer bell. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was going home that he had. And most what most people don't realize is that when um, people ring the cancer bell, it's not because they're free from cancer. It's, it means that I completed chemo. Right. And so a lot of people when they and this is because a lot of people don't know because they have never had to experience cancer or know someone that has gone through cancer. But the mm -hmm. ringing of, of the bell is not I beat cancer. The ringing of the bell is I completed chemo. Yeah. And so this young man, because he's a child, was ringing the bell, ringing his little heart out. And he's in his confined in his wheelchair and his mom is behind him and she's in tears because she's taking him home to pass away. He has maybe four or five days, according to the doctors, but he doesn't know that yeah. because his mom is like, I can't tell my son. I don't know. She didn't know how to tell him. So the, the, the best solution was to take him home so he could pass away around his right. family and his loved ones. Yeah. And so that is something that just pulls at my heartstrings that I pray for all the time is these kids because I just love them so much yeah. <laughs> but if I had a superpower it would be um healing people if you want me to give you a selfish uh uh superficial mm -hmm. superpower <laughs> um because I can't uh-huh I would want to run real fast like Chitara or Flash. <laughs> See me, you saying. See me. See me, you saying. I got something for you both. <laughs> and I know that 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 power it ain't that great. But just the stunt on y'all. <laughs> we have a family cookout. Let's do a two-legged race. Nobody wants to see me. <laughs> I done ran to Merlin and back by the time y'all got halfway across the, across the yard. I done hit Merlin. I, I, I done hit, hit Tyson's corner and okay. came back. Y'all don't want no part of this. Y'all don't want no part of this. I'm bringing back Slurpees from the DMV. But yeah, and it's still cold. What you talking about? They ain't melted at all. And y'all not even halfway across the yard. <laughs> oh, you drove your car to work? <laughs> oh, I just ran around the city of Richmond and still beat you to work. Like, I'm going to be so ignorant <laughs> with my superpower. You know? Oh, you flew to LA? Oh, you flew to LA? It took you eight hours to get to LA. It took me an hour. I just blazed the trail. You know, you talk about flying. I just saw like 17 states. What you did? Sat in the airport. Got up by TSA. <laughs> I done ran past Buffalo. I, and see, and that's another reason why. Oh. That's why teleportation is good too. Just like just yeah. like running past. Imagine being in a situation where you need those. Right. That's the remember, remember the remember the video I sent you. Hey bear. Hey Fire. bear. Yes. Hey bear. That is a situation where you either needed to teleport oh, or be able to hit a flat. Really fast. Like I got this. I'm I'm not worried about you, babe. Matter of fact, I don't have to retreat back to my car. I'm just gonna zip past you. I don't have. To, I, why am I? First of all, them people crazy. Why Smokey, you? Now you see me. Now you don't. Why, why are you talking to the bear like he understands English? Why are you? Why are you? What? They had to keep. They had to keep the bear calm. 
Cousin, people are so oblivious to themselves. Why do you think the bear understands your native tongue? How, the why, the, the so bear hard? understands like temperament. If you get aggressive, <laughs> they see, get the, bear aggressive. Knows, the bear knows it's a bear. The ba I'm a bear. And the last thing you want to do with a bear is it's go, me. you you don't want the bear to think we're the same. Right. You don't want to go, you don't want right. to go the bear. You, you don't want to be like, yeah, mother, so-and-so, sucker, sucker. Because the bear going to show you, once I stand up on these hind legs, I'm like seven feet, eight feet. I'm a bear. You are a right. person. You, so you the last bear. thing you, you want, like, animals, wild animals have an instinctive nature to protect themselves. Yeah. They they have fight or flight just like we do, but they know when it's time to fight, they're going to fight with everything in them. And a bear does not know that I'm, a bear knows it's a bear, but a bear doesn't know our capabilities. Right. That's, so, that's the fear part, right? So a bear does know though, if I have to go toe to toe with you, oh I got that. Oh, you I, now if I, I see you got something in your hand, you got something in your hand, me, bears are smart in a sense. Most animals are smart in a sense, they'll they'll take flight. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I could imagine me. Listen, if I could run, if I could hit a flash, I'd be hiking every chance I get. <laughs> what that little what that little mountain lion, what that little mountain lion gonna do to me? Can't do nothing. You, you gotta catch me. Right. That's one thing. You got to catch me. Imagine jumping out. Bruh, I'm a mountain lion. I'm finna eat you. I'm gone. He uh, like, so what? what? I'm already I'm already at home. He forgot, he like, what just happened? Yep. He looking like it was it was just a person standing here. I'm out. Yeah. A bear. I'm, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I want to go to Canada because I want to see I want to see a moose. Yeah. So imagine me running up on a moose standing beside it looking at it. And then boom. I would abuse my ability to flash. NBA finals, who on the court? I'm <laughs> gone. No, you're not. No, you not. <laughs> Super, Super Bowl, final play. Guess who's on the on the on the field? But then I'm gone. When I say very obnoxious, if you want to know my guilty. Superpower. Uh, That's it. <laughs> I'm on the field, man. I'm running the ball. <laughs> they like, what is happening in the game? What's happening? This, this ball I'm, <laughs> I'm finna be a part of history every chance uh, I get. Every chance I get. World Series. Who's in the outfield? Here comes Star. <laughs> Why? Because I can. Like, you can't and, before, and before you get mad, I'm already go. I'm already go. You don't know what happened. You can't do nothing. Oh, so like, my guilty one would be the flash. Like I can, I can. I'm out of Sonic. <laughs> Sonic could collect these rings. You know how 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 much I would eat for free. Oh my god! Imagine standing there oh. in New York. New York has the oh. best hot dogs. Probably aside from Chicago, and the man goes to hand you a hot dog, and boom, it's out his hand. It's out his hand. Like, what just happened? What, what you mean? What just happened? It's over with. Oh. I probably would be. I probably would be a little bit criminal because I mean that technically is stealing, but no one saw me. That, so, <laughs> so it's only stealing if I got caught. I just took it. Right. I just took and it. you can't catch me. Oh. Uh. Ooh. All right, cause before this um Zoom cut us off, I'm gonna send another link here in a minute. I just want to thank y'all for joining us on this episode. And guess what, y'all? We're going to be back at it here in a little bit to shoot another one because I got my cousin. I got some time. And we're going to do the thing. Be back shortly. Peace.